Aaron, and um, I'm half the man I used to be. So my old chair was like built for me when I was 300 pounds, not now. And so it was just too damn big for me. Um, And so uh, I decided to finally get a new chair that actually fit me this year and ended up going with a uh, steel case chair. And it's obscene. Ooh, you upgraded. You yeah. upgraded. It, it, the, like the, the, the armrests are like, I, depending on what my mood is, if I'm sitting like between the, this and my arm, like I could fall asleep in this chair if, if, you know, given the right circumstances. And, um, but there's just so many like clicks and things oh, that I can adjust. Um, but uh, I definitely like if you've got, you know, thirteen hundred bucks lying around and you want to buy a new chair, that th- this is the chair. I uh, I just picked my chair up at IKEA. Like my wife <laughs> used to have ago. that chair. That chair is now sitting in front of my television that I play it, video games on. Still comfortable. Um, <laughs> still does its job. <laughs> so, anyways, welcome, welcome, Mark. I'm I'm just I'm excited I'm excited because we are doing coup puddle all over again. I'm having a little bit of deja vu because I, I felt like coup puddle just ended like it just like I was just done. Yeah, I, was I, I like I feel like the May conference season like just ended like a week ago, and now I'm like between coup puddle, uh, you know, um, you know, waiting to go to. Are, are you going to Paris? I'm still up in the, actually, I'm planning on going. I'm leaning towards it, but uh, still a lot of things up in the air, but more or less. Yeah. So I, I don't know, Dan, are you going to Paris? Probably not. That's why I wanted to do a cube puddle. Yeah. Just because it was more accessible. Yeah. We're, we're um, I told Marino this, we're, uh, we're turning it into a family vacation. So um, like, I'm going to go out the week of the conference the week mm-hmm. after the conference is my kids spring break. Oh, that's so perfect. In terms yeah. Of so my wife is going to fly out with them Friday afternoon. Mm. I'm going to move from the hotel over to the Airbnb. We'll spend a few days in Paris. Then we're going up to Disneyland Paris for a few days. And then uh, we're flying back on Easter Sunday. Oh, um, awesome. So we should have a nice, uh, uh, a nice, uh, nice long, vacation and uh the boys are really looking forward to it they're both looking forward to going to paris and going to uh paris is a vibe it's a different vibe I yeah two years ago it was good it was fun i've um, never been to europe well i've only been a couple times like i went when i was a kid to i've only ever been to london i went to london once as a kid and then i went in 2019 mm-hmm. and that's it yeah, um, I've been to like so many other continents, but not Europe, which is kind yeah. of shocking to me, considering uh, our jobs, you know? Yeah. Um, well, actually, in Toronto is going to win the award for the most time I've spent in a city Ooh. in the last two years <laughs> between Coop Huddle and the vacation we took up there back in August. That's, um, that's always good. That's a good so, one. Where are, you, uh, where are you based, Mark? D.C., outside of D.C., Northern Virginia. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so this is my home office. I do have an office office, um, but uh, I haven't made it back. I, I've yet to step in it this year. Um, but uh, are you seeing that weird strobing? Uh, no. Okay, so that's, it's just me. Okay. Is it just just on your end? Like you? Just yeah, see I'm I'm seeing a weird strobing on me. Okay. Um, but no, if no. you don't see it, it You're must be some clear. weird no. interaction between the sink of my monitor and. Uh, Something with the video feed. Um, no, you're good. Okay. Um, so what are we actually recording? Oh, I just started recording a long time ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just trying to capture footage, but I, I'm trying to capture bits and pieces that I could feed like to uh, to Kancha and, um, and Bailey. Because they're gotcha. going to piece together a lot of this stuff, and then they're going to throw it up on socials and stuff over the next couple of days. Gotcha. So this isn't really like a... Uh, uh, like a uh, uh, you know, we're going to talk about these three things. This is just shooting the I, shit so that you have some video yeah. footage. Somewhere along there, like, just at least tell us, you know, how do you how do you observe security? Because 
the theme of Coop Huddle is observability, right? And and there's a strong emphasis behind it. One, with with a lot of cost optimization and FinOps going on, people really need to, sh to see where, where their data is moving around, the kinds of workloads they're running, why they're running the workloads they're running, and 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 whatnot. But security also enters the chat. So how do, how do you observe security in like five words, 10 words, however many words? I mean, security is kind of the, uh, uh, the man behind the curtain. Like it, it's part of everything yet not really visible in anything. Um, it's, you know, w like you talk about observability, right? Um, you know, th there, there are multiple aspects where security becomes important there. One, does your observability system create security holes, right? Like, are you injecting a security issue by adding these observability tools? Um, you know, I kind of think of something like, you know, going back to the antivirus question, you know, are, you know, are you creating a bigger problem than you're solving by what you're doing? So that's one aspect of it. Two, there's kind of this interesting float that we as an industry seem to go through where they, they say, okay, you know, we need to involve developers more in security. I, you know, I'm a little old school. I feel like if you're getting developers involved in security, you've already failed. Like if, if a developer actively has to think about security in order for you to not get breached, you've already lost. Um, and so that means... You know, not necessarily shifting left and saying, okay, now the developer needs to be... The developer's got enough stuff to manage. Like, just surviving is kind of an accomplishment, um, let alone trying to write secure systems. And, you know, like uh, something as simple as, um, you know, uh, 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 like input validation. And th like, that that's the sort of thing that has to happen before the developers have to actively think about it. Um, you know, last Kube Huddle, I talked about uh, you know, uh, um, having your your platform, your, your CI/CD pipeline securely talking to you know your your clusters, and that all has to happen above the security layer, like above the developer layer. Um, and and so when it comes to observability, now you've got this extra layer where like, okay, we've now got this great visibility, awesome, right? But what do you like, how's that getting injected into the process? Is it a layer on top? Is it something that's getting injected into the code? Like, how are you verify? Like, what, where is that happening? Um, I think that becomes a really big deal. Then you're generating all of this data. Is that data secure? Like, what are you doing with that data once it's been generated? Right? Because now, okay, I've got this bucket of data what how do like if i'm a bad actor and i get into that system you know what, what where am i getting that uh sorry so while, while you're looking at that diana what are your thoughts on coup huddle security and observability and and your your domain or you know i don't work in this field remember <laughs> I know, I know. And, that, and that's why I'm like, you know, you've got a very interesting domain and in, an in, in area that you work in and authentication is actually a part of that too. Oh right? yeah, for sure. Right? And, and that's why, that's why I brought you into this conversation because you bring the other dimension, the developer dimension of why mm -hmm. developers should kind of care about this level of security because Mark's position is you should, developers shouldn't. But yeah. I think there should well, it's not that they shouldn't care. It's that mm -hmm. they, the, the developer should not be the key solely thing. responsible to right. make sure that the whole company is not breached right like you know if if the developer is the, your failure point like that mm -hmm. like i'll give you a perfect example um sequel right so one of the things that really drives me up a wall is when somebody says to me oh we don't allow certain characters in a username why because they're not using prepared statements, right? They're not using properly escaped statements. They're just concatenating strings. That's bad. That is something that's reasonable to expect the developer to do. Um, but at the same time, uh, there should be something in place to backstop that, 
Mm -hmm. right? Like there needs to be something in place, whether it's, um, you know, some kind of policy that says, you know what, we don't let you write data to the database except via stored procedure, or you have to use a framework like hibernate or, you know, or whatever system you're using like that. So, so, so developers should have to think about security, Mm -hmm. but they should not be, you know, that one person holding the line against the ravenous hordes of orcs that are coming to destroy your entire enterprise. Oh, for sure. I feel like if I was responsible for all the security of my company, we would have been breached like day one. (laughs) But yeah, I guess on my side, working with authentication, it's more of like making sure that as a developer, you have that feature more so than like making sure that I'm the person who built out that entire thing. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, Mark, I just want to say thank you for being our very first sponsor for Kubehuddle. Like, honestly, <laughs> just stepping in there, you you and I had this conversation before. You truly care about community because your position is let's let's get in there. Let's make sure that we get this going and let's make sure we uplift the community. And I, and I fully see that through everything you do, man. So thank you so much. I'm looking forward to May 7th when you're there with us celebrating all the wonderfulness of Kubernetes, security, and observability. Yeah, I'm super excited for his talk as well. He did an awesome job last year, so I'm excited to see or hear whatever he ends up talking about. You are putting through a CFP, right? I I will. I haven't quite worked out what it's going to be yet. Um, But uh, yeah, no, I'll definitely be submitting a CFP. Um, Yeah, and I just want to say that, like, I, I love the smaller community conferences. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I love getting together with people that I don't get to see in the big ones and, you know, every year in, in uh, both North America. And I'm really excited about being able to go to Europe this year. Um, but, you know, they're so big. They're so like just cr- chaos, right? And this, the thing I love about Coop Huddle and the community days is you're getting in the trenches with folks that are doing the work day to day. You don't have a crazy pressure to go to, you know, 25 different sessions and 30 different parties. And, you know, it, it's ability to be able to get together and talk to people, you know, especially when there aren't travel budgets. Um, you know, it's not just an excuse to go to a great city like Toronto. It, it's, you know, a, a great excuse to get together with people that don't have the budgets to go to the centralized, uh, the, the, the centralized conferences. Um, so it's, it's really fantastic to me. And, and thank you so much, both of you, for putting this together and working towards it and then bringing it back a second year. Um, now that you know the pain of going through it once. <laughs> Love that, Mark. Love that, Mark. 